Uh, and we're live. Hi. Welcome back to Dangerous Rhetoric. This is episode 93, right? 93. Wow, 93. We're almost at 100. Very, very close. Never say die. Never say die. Before I jump into it, as always, I want to remind everyone to please like, comment, subscribe, um, especially comment. We love to hear the feedback from the episodes. And donate if you want to help us continue doing this and having these uh, very controversial, dangerous conversations. We very much would appreciate some financial support. Yeah. With all of that said, today we are joined by the based and brave Basil of the Bear Bactrian podcast. Is it called the podcast or is it like a mini series, like you said? Are you going to continue this? I have one last episode that needs to okay. come out, which is like, because yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I didn't want to like dive into like, I'm a podcaster now. It's like, no, I'm going to keep my day job, but I really okay. wanted to like get this stuff like down. So I call it a mini, like, I call it a, um, I don't even know what I call it, like a mini series, a, a little, series. a limited series, a limited, a limited series. series. Cause I, I was wondering, Brent and I were wondering about that. We're like, man, he hasn't put anything out in like five months. And it's like, man, did he give up already? Did the cancel mob? <laughs> and, but I guess that, that explains it. You really didn't have much intention to have this be something that was a long-term thing, but maybe you should consider that. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, so I I heard about you from a very old friend of mine from my hometown, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, his name is Zamir. I haven't seen him in years, actually, but he's been an awesome supporter of mine in the show. So shout out to Zamir. And he tagged you in a, in a tweet that I put out there, you know, asking people who they would like to see us speak with. So he tagged you, and I ended up on your YouTube channel. And I watched the episode that you did of your miniseries with Christian Walker, which was a really great conversation. So I commend you from that. I, I enjoyed it a lot. We'll actually touch on some of the things, same sort of things that you guys spoke on on that episode here. But um, one of the reasons I invited you on is I've been meaning to talk to someone of a Middle Eastern background about some of the issues that we're dealing with. Um, and I've been meaning to talk about Islam as well. It's one of the subjects I've been wanting to touch on the show, and I just haven't had anyone to discuss that with yet. So, like, I know Zamir is Palestinian, at least part Palestinian. So that's probably why he also recommended you, because he probably wants to see us talk. Like, hello, about connection, it. connection. So, hey, I want to <laughs> talk about some of these things in the show. And so, from what I understand, you're born from you're born in New Jersey, correct? Yep, born and raised. But your family are from Afghanistan. Yep. Yep. So, uh, Bactria would be the region. Yes, good old Bactria, you know, okay. that would be, to be specific, yeah. I thought the name of your series really was clever, and it cracked me up. But Thank whoever, you. Whoever is not um, a homo, I guess, is not going <laughs> to so, What do you mean, bear Bactria? And I'm like, sweetie. <laughs> like... You mean like a like a raw like a bear We're raw dogging this discourse right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name really cracked me up. But I guess we'll we'll jump into some of those things that we discussed that you discussed with Christian on the show, and I guess I'll start off with this difference. Um, one of the things you talked about was, you know, conservative men, <laughs> and how there's something more, I guess, attractive about conservative men in the sense that they, I guess, embrace masculinity more. I, at least that's what I find. Even among conservative gay men who are a little more effeminate, there's something about their um, their demeanor, their spirit, the way they carry themselves that has more of that masculine strength to it. You know, the outspokenness, defending kids, those sorts of things. Well, you kind of have to be, because the thing is, if like you, if you're not conservative, if you're not kind of, if you don't have your feathers ruffled by like the current thing that we're all unfortunately like have to exist through for the past like however many years, you can just like go along with the get along, and you can like cuckoo 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 with all the girlies and blah blah blah. But if you don't, you kind of have to be like, oh no, I'm gonna stand ten toes down on this. And I have to be able to be like, take it and like give it, dish it out, and like have to be able to stand, be a man about it. You know, be a man about your convictions. Yeah. No, it, it's it's true, and it's an, an attractive quality. And apparently, we're not allowed to like say that, you know, because masculinity is toxic now. Oh, are you homosexual? Are you attracted to men? Oh no, you have to be attracted to Sam Smith in a fucking <laughs> glittery jumper. That's that's girl. Oh, no. Girl, I saw a before and after. I saw a picture of Sam Smith from like ten years ago, and a picture of him from like yesterday. Glow down. 
I'm the last person to speak, but I'm also not standing up there on a fucking stage pretending to be a fucking pop star. Like that's true. Know? Yeah, he had a bit of a a, a glow down and became a, a, a they them or is he a he they? I don't even remember anymore. Something so, along those lines. Something. something those yeah, lines. something very dumb. See, yeah. I got, I'm already catching myself with the slurs. Yeah. We were <laughs> <laughs> we're kick us off here, but you know this this whole pronoun thing is is I'm so t I'm not, I'm honestly tired of talking about it. I'm tired tired of talking about these issues but we keep getting lumped in with all of this shit we keep getting uh, associated with it so it's almost inevitable that we, that we have to keep discussing it but the pronouns just feels so narcissistic to me especially the they thems and the non-binary types i'm just like this is just you not put any effort into this no, <laughs> you didn't i'm just like honey you're not low no effort you're not queer <laughs> you're not non-binary you have narcissistic personality disorder. I'm like, queer yeah. was an insult up until five minutes ago. Yeah. Like, these kids have no memory. It's like yesterday didn't even happen. It's very strange. Well, queer yeah, theory it. goes back to, like, the 90s and stuff. They were developing all that. But even then, it was kind of like a fringe academic kind of field. And what happened is it became mainstream. Yeah, like, the thing is, it's like, as long as... I find that I, at this point, like a year and a half being in, like into being on the internet, I no longer get into back and forth with like um, they, thems and gender freaks or whatever on the internet. Because the thing is, it's like, if you keep staying on the edges of it, where you're like, whoa, 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 you know, trans women are women, but these people are crazy. You're constantly going to be stuck in this like back and forth where you're trying to like have your cake and eat it too, where it's like, if you do what I do and just say, Oh yeah, no, gender ideology is nonsense. I don't have a gender identity. You don't have a gender identity. We have sexed bodies. Men can't yeah. be women, blah, 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 blah. Like the whole thing, if you pull it out like from the root, you actually like, they just write you off as a fascist. I'm like, oh cool. I'd much rather be that F word than the F word you're trying to get me to be. Like that is like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, mean, I feel like if you're not getting called a fascist, you're not speaking, you know, along the lines of the culture war yeah it's very you, you have to be getting called something these days you're either getting called a communist or a fascist and i'd much rather be called a fascist frankly yeah, have you seen the communists uh, ew, they don't look healthy i mean they don't they don't eat right no. they they can't accept their bodies the way they are you know they they like to cut up kids like it blows my mind what they're doing to the children yeah that's... these people are sick these people are sick like here they're like really leave that little femboy alone. Like he doesn't need puberty blockers. He doesn't need like you know surgery. Like he's gonna be a sassy little queen when he grows up, and that's that's beautiful the way God made him that way. Jesus, I say it all the time. I always say, thank God I was born to backwards, savage Muslim Afghan refugees who let me like <laughs> grow up to be like a normal gay person as opposed yeah. to like good progressive parents who would have like done the right thing and like sterilized me and mutilated me and like. Yeah. It just shows how backwards and regressive the whole thing is, you know? Yeah. It's like... It's not even just that either. It's just, it's this general sexualization of the youth, I feel. Like, look at the story that, that came out from Project Veritas recently about that private school in Chicago, and you had the dean there introducing students to butt plugs and other sex toys and stuff and explaining to them how to use these. Like, as as young as 14-year-olds were, were involved in that, Talking about discussion. using spit as a lubricant. Like, I'm like, they literally oh, need to learn that out on the streets, like we did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. But what's what's so crazy is that the story hardly got any coverage. Right. And it's just it's nuts that like we literally have the guy on camera record it saying these things, saying that it was like one of the parts of his job that he enjoyed the most, right? And like just radio silence from our culture people just dismiss it or the way they frame it was that it was uh you know the footage was manipulated and all this stuff like any any story that did cover it they they tried to dismiss it all project veritas you know they're a right-wing extremist group and they misrepresent it they said it that way and it's just like i was talking to my friend about this the other day and he's like dude it feels like we're dealing with demons like these are demons <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it's, it's truly true. satanic it's truly satanic it's but the thing is is like has anyone associated with the left legitimately lives in like a parallel universe to us they will see the exact same things as us see the exact same phenomenon yep. and be like oh no this is actually xyz like oh no this is actually safe you know i wish i got sex ed in school and blah 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 and it's like at the end of the day it's like it's weird because they're at one time sexualizing minors which obviously is like demonic and evil but it's like 
also like the most it's it makes everything sanitized it makes it's like it's like Folsom, it's like Disney Folsom. It's like weird. It's like this. It's it's. It makes everything sexless. It makes it for us adults horrible. It's like nothing is fun anymore because nothing is transgressive. Nothing is you know marge. I want to go back to the days where it's like before like Stonewall, where it's like, oh yeah, no, we are all you know we all are the same as we are, but we're like we keep our shit. We're marginalized because like that's the appeal of it. You know, it's like. My principal is not teaching me how to fucking use some sort of like fourteen inch dragon dildo, or whatever. Like I don't need that. So how how would you respond to people who would say, "Well, Basil, that sounds like you have internalized homophobia and that you hate yourself." Oh, I literally got that today. Literally, like forty five <laughs> minutes ago, someone <laughs> did like a five tweet quote tweet. It's like I pity you and blah blah. First, like. First of all, I promise you, if you're watching this, you do not know me. <laughs> like, you know only what I tweet on the internet and put on YouTube. But the thing is, it's like, if you had asked me when I was in my early 20s, and I was much more of, like, a leftist, I lo you know, it's like, that, I was truly, like, having, like, unable to reconcile all of these different things. Like, how do I reconcile, like, being gay and being Afghan and being Muslim and all blah, 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 and literally would lead to, like, psychological, like, dissonance, like, very, like, like, um pressure whereas like today not being a leftist and being like oh no i'm just an unreformed sodomite you know i am a sinner like we are all sinners <laughs> you know and it's like i'm not i don't have to make up these like i don't have to pretend that men can be women i don't have to pretend that i was born this way da, 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 da. like i don't have to do like the cat i don't have to do all of the show and dance i actually have no cognitive dissonance i actually am like the least self-hating i've ever been in my life yeah where it's like before I was hating everything about being Muslim, about being Afghan. I was like, oh no, I'm like, God? <laughs> I was like one of those like Reddit, like not Reddit atheists, but like along those lines where it's like, you're just like, that's all repressive and whatever. And actually like these trans hijabis, or, oh, sorry. These transgender hijabis <laughs> are, you know, the real uh, Muslims. And it's like, no, that's not it. I also noticed, you know, the, the left who claim to be so tolerant and all this stuff they're they're the quickest to use that accusation of internalized homophobia against anyone who's like them and what it comes down to is i don't think i know of anyone who is the way we are who doesn't have some degree of internalized homophobia and hasn't dealt with that at some level in in their lives or is still dealing with that so you would think that these people would understand right and instead of just like throwing that at us in this way as like an insult they would maybe try to understand where we're coming from especially from different cultures that's that's, that's what they do though they yeah. they they weaponize language they do semantic games they they try to bombard you with guilt trips and rhetoric in order to make you comply with whatever their you know demand is du jour you know today it's uh drag shows for children and uh puberty blockers you know tomorrow it's going to be something even crazier if we don't, you know, put the feet down and be like, no, stop, this is not No, 100%. Cool. Like, if you played along with the whole, you know, set list, if you played along with, if you read off the same hymnal as them, it, didn't, it wouldn't matter if you actually, ha actually had all this internal turmoil about yourself. You could be suffering inside, but as long as you kept saying, trans women are women, uh, you know, a gay marriage is a human right, da 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 and said that over and over and over again, no one would care. You'd be like, oh, they'd be like, oh, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're doing whatever. You have to love yourself. But if you're like, oh, no, I don't, I have none of this internal turmoil anymore. But I know that I cannot be a woman no matter what I do. It's like you cannot do it because you were born a man or a woman. Then it's like, oh, you're actually a backwards go fucking terrorist. And it's like, oh, I thought you were like progressive or something. But it's like, yeah. it's all a facade. Yeah, well, there, there's definitely a lot of hypocrisy with those types as, as well when it when it comes to Islam. You know, they they always are always speaking about oh Islamophobia and this and that. You can't criticize Islam, but they won't really acknowledge you know like things that happen to people like them in certain Islamic countries. It's just like uh, like do you guys not oh, see how these things are like compatible? That's my favorite when it's like the uh, oh my favorite thing that I've recently discovered that goes to this point is I found a Twitter that what it does is it'll go to all like the drag race girls and it will if they have a performance in israel they'll like blow them up and be like dming them be like you have to stand with trans and gay palestinians and it's like 
What is this combination of things? It's like, so weird. someone posted something where they were like, "Oh, you know, my sister brought home her non-binary friend, and my whole Palestinian family used the correct pronouns." I quote tweeted, "Was like, bitch, I'm a Zionist now." <laughs> I'm a Zionist. Now. So like, if this is what that is, I'm the opposite of that. Yeah. Cuckoo bananas. Yeah, town. it is. It is cuckoo bananas town, but. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know what it's like to come from that angle that you're describing being raised Islamic, but I was raised Catholic, so I, I understand coming it from that perspective. And I think when we're young, we when we come from a religious background in some way, we all struggle with that when we're younger. And I'm much like you now, I have been better at reconciling the two sides in myself. Like, I don't know if I view myself as an unreformed sodomite. I think I, I'm just... I am this way and I nothing I've tried is ever going to make me right. like, not be this way. But at the same time, um, I'm not going to pretend that all religious people are going to accept me or that they should. Right. right. It's, I have no control over that. That's not something I have control over. And I think, you know, they, they take it so serious. They also assume that like that just all Christians or Muslims like hate you or want to see you dead just because they disagree with these sexual acts that you do in in private and that's just that's such a black and white way of looking at it you know they or can, in public don't judge yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> they've, no, totally, no. they've totally forgotten that like maybe a generation before you or i it was very much the motto was like hate the sin love the sinner yeah. that was like that is like a very traditional for thousands of years type of way of like dealing with people like us where they'll be like listen we love you that thing that you keep doing at night is not, it, it makes God cry. Like, stop doing that. Like, maybe try to stop doing that. But at the end of the day, it's not like who you are 24 7. It's like, if I don't have a dick in my mouth or my ass, I, I'm not gay. It's like, at this moment, am I gay? Like, that's what really made it click for me was when I went to Afghanistan in September, was people would be like, oh my God, how are you going to go to Afghanistan? You're gay. And I'm like, no being gay isn't even a thing in afghanistan like that's not a conceptualization of how a person can be sodomy is a crime that i'm like i'm not sucking or fucking when i'm in afghanistan like for the first time ever so it's like i'm but when you are gay when you are a thing it's like and you're that 24 hours a day regardless of what you're doing or not doing then it's like oh my god your existence is a crime it's like no, you're actually, like, criminalizing me by keep calling me gay, bitch. I am an unreformed sodomite, and as long as I'm not sucking and fucking, I'm on the good side of the law. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, I think... I think in the sense that I'm gonna always be, like, desiring and having desires for men all the time. One could... <laughs> Every 20 <laughs> seconds or so. Yeah. But... I, I think I do understand your argument. I guess the other side, the way they would look at it is that, well, why should it be classified as a sin? And I mean, there's... God, that's not my business. That's not... <laughs> I, didn't <make> the rules. <laughs> I didn't make the rules. I just got the rules handed down to me. And that's the thing. It's like all sex outside of marriage is a sin. See? Yes. If you really want to... Yeah. to get railed out, you are just as much a sinner as me, the sodomite. But yeah, if you, you want to be strict, yeah, strict with your religious practice, from what I understand, according to most of them, that's that's how they view it. So that includes heterosexual sex as well. But yeah, but you know, but but you know, it's 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 important to police someone like me because in taking this heterodox position, right? I give myself the freedom to then vehemently critique the whole identity framework whether it's sexual identity or gender identity so if i was just like a girl and was just like thotting it out and blah 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 i'm not really a threat as much as i am as because like I, I tweeted a couple days ago i was like yeah me 99 percent of the time i'm like oh well you know i don't call myself gay i'm an unreformed sodomite it's actually you know it's very it's very influenced by michelle foucault it's like it's i'm muslim da, da, da. but me when i'm talking to a liberal the first words out of my mouth are gonna be as a gay man, don't be telling me that, that you know, because it's, it's like, why am I going to give up that rhetorical tool? Yeah. You know? Because it, it gives me a lot of leeway. It gives, okay. I, I get to infiltrate a lot more than say, I always say all the time to my white straight friends, I say, I genuinely feel bad for you. If you said half of what I say, you would be homeless. <laughs> you would like not have a job. 
Or I imagine can... trying to get laid in this climate. Yeah. Oh my god, imagine trying to fuck like liberal women and like not being like the most effeminate men. like that's the thing, it makes men so unattractive because they're like chasing like liberal women pussy, like mid pussy. <laughs> so it's like, oh, you're all so gross. <laughs> It makes you gross. I'm like the last one to talk about. Yeah. So you actually inspired a tweet that I put out the other day that did pretty well. And I put it out after thinking about some of these issues and I got a bit of backlash for it, but I had a lot of people who were like, actually, this is a, this is probably a good idea. This is a better way to look at it. But I tweeted identity politics is tiresome. I don't even think I want to use the word gay anymore to refer to myself because it's so politically charged. Mm -hmm. I'm an individual who happens to be physically and emotionally attracted to men, which is not my identity. 100,000% agree. Because that's the thing. I say it all the time. It's um, So basically what it was is like before pre-Stonewall, that's what it was for all of us. After Stonewall, it became politically expedient for people like us to adopt a, a identity marker because it was a way for us to, for people like us who are attracted to the same sex to organize politically, to get, and, and most really what it is is to get money through like the NGO complex and like, you know, activism complex and blah, blah, blah. And that was the case from like the 70s until gay marriage was passed. So you had up until gay marriage being passed, you had all these organizations like Human Rights Watch and GLAAD and blah, 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 spending millions and millions and millions of dollars giving people with identities jobs in order to push marriage equality, quote unquote. The second that got passed, that flipped, the script flipped to, oh, everyone has a gender identity because these things need a reason to exist. And they, yeah. the reason for existing just went away. So they need a new reason to exist. It's protect trans kids, quote unquote. And it's just funneling money to pharma. It's funneling money to big tech. And it's creating like a censorship regime. That's the thing. Because that's the thing. I don't really care about people cross-dressing and da-da-da-da-da. Like, yeah, I on a personal level, it's like, I find it, like, I find obviously mentally ill people repugnant. But what I'm concerned with is the fact that if I say on the internet, men can't be women, my account gets taken away. If I say X, Y, Z, my bank account will be canceled and all these things. It's like, that's where it, the rubber really meets the road. Yeah. You, you can't even stand up for reality anymore. Like they're, they're literally trying to erase reality. And if there's any hill to die on, that's the hill to die on. Man. Did you hear Joe Biden signed this respect for marriage equality act or whatever. And he just started like ranting uh, another whole like nonsensical like phrase. And Don Lennon is on talking about Club Q. They're trying to make it as if they're like the champions of all us alphabet people. I, I won't even use the acronym anymore. I don't like the acronym. I'll say gay plus. Like that's like, you know, like we're yeah. Others gay and affiliated. The rest. Uh, gay and affiliated. Gay and affiliated. Gay and the the hangers on. Yeah, right? the coattail riders. It's just like, because <laughs> really, when you get down to it, it was gay men and that that sort of pushed the the envelope and and women. Gay and lesbians. Yeah, know. and but like well, gay women are lesbians, so even they were using the term gay for a while as well. So men yeah. who fuck men have always, throughout history, been the movers and shakers of history like from alexander the great to the day it's yeah. men who like appreciate and like worship to an extent actual like the way i put it is like actual men who actual run society men. they're the ones who are the movers and shakers and what they do is like they keep women out of the public sphere by like keeping them mesmerized with like con conceptions of like glamour and fashion and culture to keep them out of the public sphere so that we can suck and fuck their men while they like from the world you know it's like, <laughs> that's been our historical role and it yeah. all went away when we decided to start calling ourselves gay it's like yeah. so annoying we, we've also historically Ruined it! we've also historically been great poets and artists and musicians and create all types of creators you know have been of the homosexual variety alan and, turing yeah. kind of sort of invented the computer well i think part of it too is um you know, because we typically don't have children and traditional families, is we kind of like 
like our art, our creations, those things become the things that we give birth to. And I do think there is like, I do think God made us for a particular reason that we do serve a role in the world. And, you know, that perhaps we're not necessarily meant to be with women for that reason that we have these other things that we're supposed to do that contribute to culture and society and in pretty, pretty magnificent ways, you know, that make everyone's lives better. Like Brent just mentioned Alan Turing, right? He invented the precursor to the computer. Like he's the reason we're even having this conversation right now. And we went like, from that to this. <laughs> why oh why yeah and this this is the stuff that makes me just want to like go back into the closet you know and 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 once you you know it's just so trash it's not it even culture trash. it's not even it's like so like low it's not even like low brow in a sense that it's like oh my it's like like this is garbage like it's not even good it's not be entertaining like it's like yeah. not it's like Ha 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 ha! Who is that? The Department of Energy secretary? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, she just, in jail, girl. They lied. Like, uh, is in jail. I was like, how soon before he claims to be a trans woman to get put in a woman's prison? But the fact that like this is what we get associated with simply because of our sexual proclivities is what's so frustrating about it. Like, this is what a lot of people who say are outside of being like us think is our culture whether right. we accept it or not like harnesses and drag shows and all this stuff and it's like there are so many of us who don't subscribe to any of this who have no but that's why i reject the whole thing outright that's why i don't try to connect myself to the long line of sodomites of yesteryear because you really it's 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 impossible to not have it you end up having to deal with it it's kind of like a ball of wax you can't really separate the two that's why i'm like yeah no just because i sucked and fucked doesn't mean that i'm like just like Michelangelo, you know, it's like, yeah, no, men, there have always been men who want to suck and fuck. Like that has always existed. It will always exist. Like it'll, there will always be people like us, but the idea that we are a community together, that you and I have some sort of have shared interest. Like if you were like, if you had like completely different, like, uh, opinions to me or whatever, like this thing is like so many people who call themselves gay are completely anathema to you or I. But because they also suck and fuck, we're supposed to have some sort of community with them. And I reject that idea whole outright, but I also extend that to say, no, there's no real connection between me as a person who sucks and fucks. And also, which one is this? It's the same event. Is this uh, Jasmine Kennedy? Oh, uh, me? That's the thing. It's like, I hate all of this, but I watch every episode of Drag Race. See, I'm the opposite. I've never really seen Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. That's, I, oh, I would... my goodness. No, I love trash TV. This is like my Real Housewives. <laughs> no, then this, this one's this one's a this one is a, a transformer. This yeah, well, this person eventually uh says hi to a nine-year-old in the crowd and then you know says something like oh. it's such an awesome mom for bringing your kid here. This wow. is what we need. Parent more parents like you no. in the crowd. This is no. like yeah! no, no, no. I'm no. shocked. I'm shocked. You can't I mean, like, 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 friendly fucking show, like Fun fact, the season that this person was on had five people, five Transformers. When the season started, there was only, I think, two or three. And by the time it ended, there were five or six. Now tell me it's not a social contagion. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were literally coming out on the show. This one came out on the show. It's like, oh, I'm a trans woman. <laughs> yeah, it feels like they're just competing for attention at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They know oh, that they know they're it. gonna, you know, so have a big party thrown. This for them. one. So I didn't win anything on my season, so thank you. How are you today, baby? Major, I'm gonna say hi, Major. Oh how old are you, babes? How old are you? Nine. You're nine. Oh my god! Oh, look at that. Thank you. Whoever's mom is out here. Where's your mom? Is my mom in here? Hi, mom. I saw you at the meeting green, didn't we? Thank you so much for bringing Major Owl. That's so sweet of you. Oh, we love you. That is so sweet of you. This is what we need. The mother is the problem. No, no. This is not what we need. The mother is truly the problem here. Yes. The mother yes. is about chasing liberal. Yes. But the real issue here, too, is that um, it's like... Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. But no, the, the real issue here is the mother. And it's it's really it's they're using their children as props in order yeah. to get points to say how you know progressive they are, how inclusive. Oh, this was my point. It's actually really important for people like us 
to reject this and in the way that I like the way I was talking about earlier in like a really holistic way to be like fundamentally like none of us have gender identities point blank period once and everything that falls down uh, comes downhill from that is like obviously nonsense just start from there because there's a reaction to this there is already a reaction to this that's happening and we don't yeah, of course, <laughs> we don't want that reaction to then end up implicating us because the reaction is righteous. The reaction is correct. This is demonic. This is Moloch sacrifice. Yep. But we want to be left to separate ourselves from it. But as long as we are people like us do it at the edges, do it at the, you know, around it where it's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Trans women are women, but this is too much. No, 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 sweetie. It's a slippery slope. You got to get off the slope. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even like the words trans women and trans man. I think what we need to do is get that language clarified we need to say like you know a feminine man or a man who pretend to be women women who pretend to be men yeah it's a mouthful though yeah <laughs> you know what i'm seeing is tim and whim it's like trans identified male okay. and, and like trans identified tim woman yeah tiff but so, it seems a little I, that's up because it connects you to radical feminists radical feminists are not our friends no they're crazy to to address <laughs> that though, and we learned it through. I learned it through our good friend Billboard Press. Well, oh yeah, Billboard Chris, exactly because they are very pressed that they because the thing is they're very pressed about the un, the um, the inarguable fact that where we are today is a direct result of them. Them yes, because you cannot get to where we are today without Judith Butler. Yeah, you cannot get to where and Judith Butler for better or for worse, you know, took Foucault, misunderstood it. Oh, no, what she really did was she took Simone de Beauvoir, applied Foucault, misunderstood it, and she created a fucking army of disgusting, just genetic freaks, you know? But it's like, if you try to tell someone in, two th in the year 2000 that Judith Butler isn't a feminist, they'd laugh in your face. Judith Butler is a fucking feminist, and we got here because of you. They hate that fact. Yeah. So they really hate anyone who points it out. And honestly, they are, uh, they're horrible people online. And what they're mad about is the fact that the conservatives are taking their lunch and they're like, they're running away with it. And it's sorry, sweetie. Kind of did it to yourselves. Yeah. We, we had billboard Chris on the show twice already. And last like, time Chris. he's a great dude. We've hung out with him before. We actually went out on the street with him over the summer for New York city pride. Love that was that. interesting. I'll be out there again with him in about a month's time. We're going back to Boston to yeah. protest their mutilation. Love that. Godspeed. Yeah. He's an awesome dude. And you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about though, is this idea that, you know, they're also, you know, they claim to be, paragons of same-sex rights and women's rights and these things not realizing that pushing this gender identity stuff is erasing that like right. you you need the gender binary i'm sorry sex binary because we got to stop with the gender shit too right the binary the binary of there's only two sexes if you erase that reality there is no same sex rights there is no women's rights that stuff all goes out the door like what makes a homosexual man a homosexual man is that there are two sexes and we're attracted to the same one, the exactly. one that answers powers. That's it. And if you just say, well, that's all a construct and stuff and all this shit, it's like, do they not realize what that's doing? And this is why so many gay men and lesbians and bisexual people, because again, like if you're someone who's attracted to both, you need to be able to identify what both are, right? Right. Bi cycle. Are yeah. Bicentennial, bi biannual. Bi <laughs> so a lot, a lot of quote unquote LGBs are very very much trying to like disassociate from the T's and the Q's and you know the other Well that's where you get the LGB alliance, which I have my own opinions about. But the the thing to get to what you're saying is the thing is when you're talking to someone who will lie to your face and pretend to believe that men can become women, that's really what it is. They're lying to your face. They every single person on this planet knows what a man and a woman is. They know which of their parents gave birth to them and they know which of their parents impregnated them, if they know their parents. But they know what men and women are, okay? It's the ones who will lie and play in your face and pretend to not know what do you mean trans women aren't women? Now what is, you know, the ones who are doing that are either they don't know, they don't understand the consequences of the, pre the, the premises that they're adopting or they're getting their pockets filled through the NGO complex and they know you, there's some things that are verboten to say and some things that you have to say. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you just have to kind of 
if it's someone that you know is not getting paid to have these stupid opinions, like they don't work for GLAD or for the Democratic Party or for whatever, then you really just, it's very simple to explain to them. And it's like, I always, because I'm an attorney, I bring it back to like, what is the bread and butter? What is the material reality? Because I'm also, I come, my background is, I was like a Bernie libtard. I'm like an anti-left Marxist. Like, I'm still kind of like that way. I'm like a Marxist for Trump, whatever. <laughs> but it's like, but the point is, it's like, it's about civil rights litigation. What yeah. they want ultimately is to include gender identity and expression in the Civil Rights Act. And what that does, it undermines our sex-based rights. Yeah. So when women have all these gains in the workforce and blah, 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 it's because of their sex. But if you undermine that, wow, does that really help like the powers that be to undermine your sex-based protections? Does it really help the powers that be who right. want you to like do X, Y, Z if they censor anyone who is in opposition to them using the pretext of gender ideology? And it's like many people just don't realize that. And they think that, oh, just be nice. Come on. What does it cost you so much to be nice? And it's like, sweetie, I'm nice. You bring your transformer friend around, I'll call her she and her, and I'll cock it a kiki ku with the girls, okay? But the thing is, I always get the reputation of being like the spurgy autist. And it's like, listen, I'll sit here pretty and quiet, but I promise you, if we just said very plainly, like, hey, sweetie, yeah, cock it a kiki ku, you're a girl. But you should not be allowed to change your sex marker on your government issued IDs because you cannot change your sex. It's not going to be me that's spurging out. It's going to be the, your transformer friend, and that's what it, it's, that's what it really comes down to. Because it's like I always use the example that really like clicks for a lot of like apolitical, like just be nice types, where it's like, should a person be allowed to change their sex marker on their government IDs? They usually are like, oh, I don't know, because they never really thought about it that way. It's like that question isn't usually posed to people, blah, blah, blah. My opposition is obviously no. I'm like, okay, well, if you allow me to say because I'm a woman to change my license and my passport to F and you allow people to do that, what is to stop when a woman goes into a gynecologist's office and says, I only want to be examined by a woman. They bring in a transformer doctor who looks like Charlotte Clymore and says, hello, ma'am, I'm here to examine you. And she's like, oh, yeah, no, cockity kiki coo I'm very nice to you, she, her, but I, uh, for reasons, I need to be examined only by an actual woman. Oh, but my passport says F, my thing says F, you are now in violation of the Civil Rights Act. That's like the whole yeah. legal construct that this is like, they want us to be constantly caught up in, like, even, like, yes, obviously, the Drag Queen Story Hour is morally repugnant, disgusting, repulsive, whatever. But it's honestly just, like, a downstream sideshow to, like, the very dry black and white, like, can men become women? Are you allowed to change your gender identity on your on your government uh, paperwork? Stuff like that. And it's, like, that's where I like to keep it focused because it's, like, I don't give a fuck about what your Transformer friend wears or calls themselves. Like, do it. I, it's the fucking city. Do whatever the fuck you want. Like, yeah. Yeah, this, the point you bring up about be nice and this whole culture of niceness it's a it's a culture of coddling and i think it's very much related to female it's, coddling it's related yeah, so you live in a gynocracy yeah <laughs> so you know you brought up feminism and how the feminists don't want to acknowledge that they very much kind of opened the door for this stuff in a way by that culture of coddling of be nice they you know, actually, when I when I put, pointed it out that feminists are largely, you know, the reason we are where we are, I have had them tell me that it's no, it's because the men have infiltrated the feminist spaces, and now the men are taking over the feminist ideology. And they're I'm so like, good at it. Maybe you should stop doing politics if a couple yeah. of men could just take it over and make you do like the most nonsense shit in the fucking planet. No, I always say. Um, we are we live in a gynocracy and it's like the moment it really clicked for me was um like a couple of years ago there was like some coup or something in Bolivia and you had AOC crying about it. I'm like you're telling me we live in a patriarchy where I'm being scolded by a 27 year old fucking congresswoman about uh, supporting a coup in Bolivia so we get lithium for Elon Musk like you people live in an alternate reality we haven't lived in a, any type of patriarchy since before the industrial revolution like yeah. you want to talk about patriarchy sweetie come with me to Afghanistan it's actually not that bad lots of women like it it's <laughs> really like it's like patriarchy doesn't mean abusing women it just means that it's a society dominated by men it's like yeah, that's how human society has been for, like, almost, like, 90% of it. You know, it's, like, women have 
women's domain was not the public sphere. For better or for worse, I'm not making a value judgment on whether that is the case sure. or not. Yeah. But it's like we do not live in a patriarchy in the West. Like you're insane. I don't know. If you if you've been to a college in the West and you've seen sorority houses, I think you have a very good argument as to why women should not run the world. Oh <laughs> my god. Look at look look at Fin like you look at like Finland. What is the oh, there's like three look at Finland and New Zealand. Let's just take those two examples. Run by women who are like under forty. One of them wants to lock you in your house forever, and the other one wants to start a nuclear war with Russia. I think we need to, like, tamper down on the girl boss shit for a minute. Like, girl we need boss to- shit. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Need to, we need to rethink that, take that one back to the drawing board, uh, yeah. repeal the 19th. And don't get me wrong, there are women who act like men who make great leaders. Like, Angela sure. Merkel is very, very, but it's like, it's because she's not, you know doing coke like the P- the prime minister of finland and being like yes dancing to beyonce it's like it's because she's like acting in an aggressive in a, assertive in a way. masculine way and this is the thing there, there's a general demonization right now in the west of masculinity it's it's perceived as just unless unless bad. it's a woman yeah. unless it's a woman embodying, embodying it, traditionally yeah. masculine but they never can you'll see all these trans yeah. men on tiktok crying about doing a 12-hour shift at starbucks yeah. Stop, <laughs> please. if they can't do it but you're 100 percent right there's an attack on masculinity because it's like it's a very masculine thing to say, I don't care what's popular i don't care what the cu- culture is telling me i know what's right and wrong and they want to beat that out of you. We are disagreeable by nature. We are uh, antagonistic. We do not like to be pushed around, especially the, the more contrarian of us. Uh, it's it's very hard to get us to align with any sort of group think. And so they can't, they know that. They know they can't, you know, make us one of them. So what do they do? They demonize, you know, they, they paint you as an other. They, they paint your attitudes as outdated and then they go on the attack and then they try to they, they try to invent a drama triangle where they present you as the antagonist, which is really a narcissistic reversal. They are actually the real antagonist in the situation, trying to push all this weird ideology on, onto the culture and it, onto children. It is a cultural revolution. You know, I very much oh, agree. thousand percent. I don't know if you know James Lindsay. It's called neo marx yeah great guy you know we've hung out with him before too he's a really awesome genuine person and this is this is how he is looking at it from that lens and i think he's correct you know i think it is some sort of like neo-marxist cultural revolution thing that we're experiencing right now like even all the cancellations and getting dragged on the internet and stuff these are just modern digital struggle sessions in mount china it's the same thing they they want to get you to denounce your family denounce your friends if you hold these positions and in a sense it's actually an attack on traditional western values this was not what the west was it was not supposed to be this way i mean ironically we've gotten so open and free and liberal that it has gone in this direction but i think you need a balance between the two sides like i like i'm not someone who supports rigid strict conservatism you know i think you need a level of conservatism so you're, I mean, you're a homosexual. It kind of goes like we're not going to be the most, sure. you know, straight yeah. arrow people. You know, we just aren't, you know, by nature. But uh, you know, if you want to preserve the things that made the West great and made it a free society, you have to have a level of conservatism. That's what you're doing. You're conserving, you're conserving what you, the gains you made. Yeah, that work right. But what also made it unique here was that there was a there was a level of. Sorry. Canceled. Sorry. Forgot to turn your phone up. There was there was a level right of we we are a liberal society in a sense, and that that is also what the West is. That's kind of what we're founded on. We overthrew a monarchy, you know, where we we have personal rights like free speech and guns and, and these sorts of things. So it's all about that balance. You know, we have to conserve the stuff that got us here and enabled that to happen. But we don't want to like go so far in the liberal direction either right when you just you toss all of that out there's no more boundaries there's no more morals and you know this is why i love like jordan peterson's approach when he talks about the big five personality and how you know people who are conservative they're more conscientious and they just they're good at running structures once they're set up but you need the creative types too you need the openness to experience types who tend to be more liberal minded and you need them to have a dialogue and to 
interact in order for this society to function in the way that it does. But, you know, go too far to the right, you get that rigid authoritarianism sort of structure, and then go too far to the left, you get this open, throw all morals out, and then that almost becomes a form of authoritarianism because, like, you have to behave that way. You have to throw all your boundaries away. And if you don't, we're going to force you to, or you're canceled. Yeah, no, it's, like, it's it's fundamentally, like, premised on, like, the myth of, like, historical progress in which it's, like, the future is always better than the past. The past is always worse than the future. Yeah. And it's, like, I'm sorry, I recently rewatched all of The Nanny. If you cannot tell me that we are a less racist society today than we were then, no. I saw an episode where Fran Drescher is rapping with Coolio, and there's no awkward interracial woodenness in the way that today it would be very much where it's like on this 30 minute episode we have to spend 15 minutes discussing why coolio has appeared and why fran drescher is going to be rapping and why it's not problematic it's like no we were fundamentally a much less racist society in the 90s than we are today we are a extremely racist society say it's just that it's here it is reverse <laughs> you know it's like it's just um there's a there was a guy uh, a professor in I think University of Pennsylvania or something, whatever. His name is Adolf Reed. He's black, so don't get it's his name is his name is Adolf, <laughs> but he's like it's not a thing like that. But he's Why like, did his parents do that to him. Jesus. You know, they're intellectuals. But he's like, you know, the the purpose of race today serves the exact same purpose it did a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago they kept us all separate by telling white people they're superior and black people are bad. Today they do the exact same thing. They reify those racial divisions, but in the exact opposite way, in which we're all forced to worship like the the idea the abstraction in our head of the mythical magical black person, like black girl magic and all that stuff. And it's yeah. like sorry, I don't do and what's great, and I like I love not being white in this regard, where it's like I don't have white guilt. So it's like I don't have to like be like, oh, oh, oh. it's like no, my family got here in the eighties. Don't like I don't I don't worship minorities, sorry. <laughs> You're like, I am not responsible for slavery in the mid 19th and 18th century. Yeah, and like, neither are you. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, you know, yeah. if you want white people to be responsible for slavery, you also have to give them credit for building Western civilization, but you can't oh, do that. It's just a thing. Do that. <laughs> and, uh, Douglas Murray talks about this often. Actually, I was just watching a discussion um, he had with, I think it was with Jordan Peterson, and he was talking about this exact thing where it's like, people are afraid to talk about racism now against white people. And they're afraid to talk about the fact that this cultural revolution, what, it seem, what the goal of it does seem to be is that you, you have to view all white culture as bad. You can't even associate anything good with whiteness anymore. It's all oppressive. It's right. all America it's all bad. That's what they do, and that's what they do. They actively associate. I, I don't know if you've ever seen it where it's like this like infographic where it's like, subtle white supremacist thing is like expecting people to be on time expecting people to meet deadlines these are it's this white supremacy I'm like it's the bigotry of low expectations it's yes. like oh it's this is like just no one is more racist than an anti-racist like i'd much rather be around quote unquote racist because they're actually like not racist if you talk to internet racists their group chats are filled with like black brown asian whatever it's like but if you talk to anti-racists, it's all just like middle class urban white people who all have race play fetishes. Like Yeah. Yeah, our friend Peter talks about this often, Peter Feliciano. Um it also it makes me think of uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the boondocks. It's a cartoon. Yeah. 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 The, the scene where Martin Luther King comes back from the dead. I, and, doesn't ring the bell. Oh my god, Brad. I almost want I to can't I we're gonna copyright strike. Oh, we're not allowed to play that right. Oh, oh it's no, because so it's just, like longer than 30 seconds. Just go go, you know, after this, definitely look up the boondocks and Martin Luther King and you'll see the scene I'm talking about. <laughs> But uh, I can't. I can't even like say it here because I don't have to like say the n word. Hold on, oh, okay. I, 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 I can play it, but I can't. Uh, Are we allowed to play that now? No, I can play it, but I can mute it and put the uh, which moves it's on. I mean, if we like talk over it, right? Don't we get like? Oh yeah, you're doing commentary. Yeah, I'm doing commentary. It, it's efficient. It's uh, sufficiently transformative. Sufficiently, so we can. Let me see. Hold on. We can do a little freeze. We're gonna talk over it. Excuse me. So, you know, just to sum to sum it up, you know, Martin Luther King comes back from the dead, and he sees a lot of these modern ghetto black culture like types 
partying, drinking, dancing, and he's trying to like speak to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so good. Well, yeah. this is fundamentally the 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 issue that we have with like the neo racism we live under currently. Like, I, I'm going to keep talking over it so that you guys try. I'm going to try not to get you guys a copyright strike. But this is fundamentally the problem: is that you have these like bourgeois upper middle class drivers who want to like go through the institutions using this reverse racism. But that's really what it is: the left is a coalition between a professional managerial class and, like, street lumpen. Not to racialize the street lumpen in any particular way, but, like, violent street lumpen, whether it's Antifa, whether it's, like, gangsters or thugs or, like, whatever. It's, it's like, they will let the people run wild through, like, bail reform and shit. They will let people run wild on your streets so that you get physically accosted, so that you are more, so that you are in a constant state of terror. Yeah. And when, you, when you're in a constant state of terror, you're more likely to be like, oh, we need to invest more in these programs. And it's like, who's operating these programs, which are PMC type of, like, bourgeois strivers, whether they're black, white, or whatever, you know? I'm just playing you like a fiddle. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. People, these motherfuckers get led by the fucking nose. And it's so sad to watch because it's like, Genuinely, a lot of people who have like kind hearts, who want to be nice, who want to have a better society, and they get led by the fucking nose into hell, basically. And it's like, sorry, I'd rather be mean and like lay my head down at night knowing that I didn't fucking participate in this shit than like be yeah. nice and be a useful idiot. Yep. You know? Yeah. And that whole saying to the road to hell is paved with good intentions. God, is it so true? So mm-hmm. true. A lot, a lot of these people, I think, do mean well, but in just being nice and allowing this stuff to happen, what they don't realize is that, like, the consequences of it are pretty bad and it are going to get worse. And the left knows this. That's why they lie about shit. That's why they say, like, oh, if you don't support trans and kids, they're all going to kill themselves. Not true. Not true. It's, it's yeah. not true. Most of these people end up desisting, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, I don't like talking stats and figures to these people because they don't actually care about any of that. Right. They, just wanna, exactly. they just want to be on the right side. But it's like, but these people are so easily manipulated. And the people who are manipulating you know this. And it's like, they're doing it purposefully. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, uh, Basil, you, we watched a podcast you were on, or no, I think you were talking, it was the one you were talking with Christian, and you were telling him about uh, what it's like being gay in Afghanistan. And you had this, you kind of like sort of went on this little bit about how like they sort of have like a gay youth and then they sort of mature out of it into like, is that? that's the norm because and, and it says obviously like gay people exist in afghanistan gay people exist everywhere so right. i always find it fascinating when there's like oh there's no gay people here and it's like well there are i think there are, just, but the thing is that we don't have a category of people called gay there's no right. al- there's no alternative lifestyle quote unquote called gay you know right. yeah there are people getting fucked in their ass everywhere like you know it's but it's like um something to preface it is that i've noticed like i grew up in north jersey my whole life like basically until i was like uh, uh, in middle school i thought i was italian (laughs) because it's like everyone around me is italian but i noticed that all tradit all cultures are traditional in the exact same way so like my parents sound just like my italian friends grandparents because my parents are the ones who came to this country and their grandparents are the ones who came to this country and they all have very similar ideas of like don't be a fucking putana don't fucking dress like that don't fucking do this don't do you know it's like very it's all the fucking same where it's like don't be a slut if you're a woman and be straight if you're a boy like very simple like kind of stuff and it's like this what i was describing there is has been true in all traditional societies before you know the 60s honestly people people fucking swear the world began in during the sexual revolution of the 60s but that's not the case and the way it's always been in almost any traditional society whether it's in asia the middle east europe wherever is that when you're an, a, a a young man you are in the company of other men. You will be the bottom. And then as you get older, you will end up being a top. And then it's like, oh, but you'll end up settling down and marrying, obviously, and having kids. Because that's obviously the only legitimized path for you. But, you know, whatever you do on the side with, like, you see a you see a femboy on the side over there. And you want to, you know, it's like, especially in a society without 
hormonal birth control, if you, as a man, have sex with your wife every time you want to have sex, you will, like my grandmother, be pregnant 18 times. But you can't do that. So it's like, hey, you know, when you're out in the town and you see a femboy on the, you know, it's like, hey, da, 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 whatever. But it doesn't make you gay. It doesn't, it's not a lifelong, um, intrinsic, immutable identity that you are. It's just kind of like guys being dudes, dudes being guys, guys doing stuff. You know, it's like, that's kind of the conception. And I remember mentioning in that podcast too, it was like, we do have a separate category called Isaac, which are basically what I call the way I translate are failed men, which are kind of just like males who are just like so femme that like, they're not convincing nobody. Like, sweetie, you're not going to marry a girl. Just stay there and do your, you, you dance for tips and you, you perform at weddings and you, you are very, everyone loves you because you're fabulous or whatever, but like, it's embarrassing if your son is an Isaac and obviously, and it's like, and your the Isaac is not going to marry nobody. And it's like, that is like a separate thing, but that person is not like gay in which they have like um, a legally recognized identity from which they're able, that they're able to trade on and for like prote legal protections or legal favors, you know, in the way that it is in the West, which really only came about in the sixties, which was based on like a century of creating a homosexual identity. Like I am, you know, you could say a lot about Michel Foucault and like what he liked to do in North Africa or whatever, but he was a hundred percent right about his conceptions of homosexuality. That's where a lot of this comes from for me. Yeah. See, I don't know. I, this is definitely one of the, the subjects, you know, I struggle with because I don't think I would have qualified as an Isaac. I'm not, no, 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 no. You would have been have, expected to get married, boy. I would have, but the thing is I have like no Go attraction some to pipe, it. girl. No, Come on. Like, I would literally. Don't worry. You live with her. You live with her. <laughs> you, do, you do your job. You do your job one time, you know, on your wedding night. Do your job once a month. Keep your wife happy. I don't know if I, I can do what you Do what you do on this side. Come on. I don't and think I could. <laughs> I don't think I could. That's the an thing. older man would start like berating you, like, "Come on, you can't get it up." You can't. It's like no, <laughs> sexually assaulting you. I can't. I can't. I honestly can't. You know. Oh, and... I know. Trust me, I know. I'm yeah. Like... <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like that's where like, you want to know why like... why men have had alcohol problems in the past, and <laughs> so like I understand. Like, like... I gotta get drunk to fuck this bitch. Like yeah, shit. literally, like, literally. <laughs> I and under I went over with the boys so I could go home and like knock this bitch up because everyone's expecting me to. Like you mentioned, you mentioned on that podcast as well, you know, how there is a part of you that would like to just go to Afghanistan, settle down, meet a woman, have a bunch Two of Two Afghan baddies. Yeah. And it's just like, I feel like I would not be able to do that, even though there's a part of me that sympathizes with that and also would want that too, would want a traditional family, wants to sire children, all those things. It's but not fair to her. That's how I feel about it. I feel like it's not fair to the woman if I were right. to put myself into that situation. Not only is it not fair to me in the and not fair to her in the sense that I don't think I could perform. Like I think I could. I think I could. You know, you start slobbing on this shit. Like I, I can get it going. But the thing is, it's not fair to her to con because I. The thing is, I ha I grew up in the West. I was born in the West. I've been psyoped for my whole life. Like I came out to my friends when I was seventeen. I. I have a whole life of like living as quote unquote a gay man, you know? So it's like, it's not fair to her to be like, hey, this, is this your husband? <laughs> you know, it'd be like, and have her constantly embarrassed by my past. So it's like, it would have to be like such a unique situation in which it's like, you fully understand what the situation is and you're still down for it. It's like, why am I going to throw my eggs into that kind of pipe dream? I can still be very clear about like, no, I know sodomy is a sin, just like premarital sex is a sin, et cetera, et cetera. And not like, I'm not going to play, be part of your LGBTQIAOPP2 plus S community. And still be like, yeah, I don't think that, I don't think that that'll end up being for me. I'll say this though. I came out to my parents when I was 24. So kind of late, but when I told my mom this, I was like, you know what? Who knows? Maybe I'll just like, you know, settle down, marry two women and like have 10 to 15 God fearing children. She completely understood that a hundred percent more. She's like, yeah, of course. That's when you're young, you know, you fucking it out. You didn't say you fucking it out. <laughs> you know, when you're young, you're doing whatever, but then you get married, you know, it's your job. You're so, and it's like, that's what it is. It's like, you have, you're a man. We are men. The part about the, you know, it's two sides. It's not all 
rainbows and sunshine. Part of being a man is the fact that you have responsibilities thrust upon you. And that's what being why being gay is so subversive because you're flouting those societal expectations of what your duty should be as a man, which is provide for a woman and, and raise a bunch of God-fearing children. We're subverting that by instead saying, LOL, no, we're going to go suck and fuck. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's like... So that's what, and my, but my mom fully was like, oh no, of course, it makes sense. And I'm like, I don't actually know if I could do it. So another thing I want to address, and I know you do it just jokingly, you know, the sucking and fucking and stuff, but is that we get reduced to that, to the sexual act, as if there are no strong emotional bonds. Love, actual romantic love that forms between people who have same sex relationships. So what do you feel about that? The first thing that came to mind was, what's love got to do, got to do with it? Because <laughs> for me, coming from my background, I never understood. So, okay. Indians will call it love marriage as opposed to arranged marriage. We don't really have arranged marriage as such as Afghans. But I always knew growing up that love is not what's necessary to create a sustaining relationship. Love can grow. Love can come. What you need is shared values and a shared understanding of mutual respect and shared values. Where it's like, I respect you. I forsake all others for you. You are my partner. And we both know what we're doing here is creating a family. Love. Yes, love. I love my brother. I love my sister. I love my friends. I love whatever. But I don't, you don't need necessarily romantic love in like the, in the, um, cause if it's fleeting, the type of like, kind of like Western love that we're kind of put into our head, the Eros, you know, is like, it's very fleeting. It's here today, gone tomorrow. You do something that gives me the ick. I don't have it anymore for you, but you have shared values and mutual respect. That is the basis of an actual relationship. Like I would never say like, I would never say that my parents were in love with each other. I never, actually, I don't ever I remember seeing them having like a romantic interaction with each other, but they had an immense respect for each other. They had, they had love for each other, but it wasn't like, oh baby, give me like, Valentine's day. We go to the blah, blah, blah. No, it's like, we both work all the time and we fucking, we're raising a family together. We, you know, we get to talk, we have meals together. We wake up together, we sleep together, whatever. But I, love, per, as such, for me, it's my own personal opinion, has never been um, has never been a necessary condition for a successful relationship. Well, I think it. I, I would include in the definition the things that you talk about: the mutual yeah. respect, the shared values, those sorts of things. And I guess you know, I would I would argue that, as rare as it is, there are same sex couples who have those things they can 100%. have values they build a life together and those sorts of things and it's not just about the sex the sex is right. just one one part of it one way of bonding not the only way but sometimes people want to use that as cope to be like but then how can this be a sin and it's like sweetie i don't know i didn't make the fucking rules the, the rules say you put it in the butt it's a sin i don't know what to tell you like i don't know what to say and that's it's not my place to question it. That's a part of coming around to like having like religiosity in my later twenties was being like, oh no, you it's not your your place, especially like as a Muslim me, you know, to be, Muslim means to submit to the will of God. You submit. It's you. It is what it is. You are you, you can be you are a sinner. All of us are, but it doesn't make just because you are a sinner doesn't make the sin not a sin. Doesn't make the thing not a thing. It's like not to say that love is a sin. Love is, but, you know, physical acts are crimes in, in, in religious jurisprudence. So this, I guess, leads me into another subject I wanted to discuss with you. And may, I guess it'll be like the last one we talk about. But, you know, Islam, you're, you already touched on it. We've touched on it a few times here. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, like, how compatible do you think Islamic values really are with, say, Western values western culture and granted western culture is changing a lot now and i think there's a lot of western culture now that's not even compatible with what western culture was but in in the more traditional sense of what western culture should be yeah so i actually have a podcast about islam and the left specifically uh that i did with this guy named abdullah yusuf it's um it's called uh the uncucking of the american muzzy <laughs> and so 
I'll start by saying this, like to pick up on the second part that you said that American liberal values of today, Western liberal values of today are not Western liberal values. And then the way I'll demonstrate that is like, so on my YouTube um, recommendation, sometimes I'll get these things where it's like New York City, 1909, colorized or Paris, 1901, colorized. And it's like early 20th century footage that they've colorized. You know what you notice? Or uh, the one that's coming to mind is it, it was like a, something in England, like a working class coal neighborhood in England. All the women, hair covered. All of them dressed modestly. All the men dressed, you know, it's like these, because those, the, what it is, is. I, I did watch some of this episode. I didn't finish it, though. This was the author, the guy who wrote. Um, yeah, he wrote a, a fiction novel called. Yeah. Um, Fuck, he's gonna be so mad. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely buy it if you have. Maybe I can find it. It's good one. It's good one. Oh, he's cute. Yeah. He's... Oh yeah, no, he's very handsome. But he's very straight and very Muslim, and he uh, they did take their grace by like I'm very grateful that these men come on my show. Like, there's another yeah. one I have like an Afghan journalist. He comes on. He's like, listen, if you were like an LGBTQIA O P P two plus S type. I, oh, sorry, <laughs> I would not have come on the show, but because you are not trying to pervert your religion because of your own sexual proclivities, I'll come on your show. So it's a uh, Blood of the Levant. Yes, Blood of the Levant. It's a uh, it's a fiction. It's if you like fiction, if you like sci fi. Um, hey. yes. So look at that face. Um, <laughs> uh, so you know. The way I'll put it is that if you're actually Jewish, for example, if you're at, if you're an Orthodox Jew, you cannot tell the difference between an Orthodox Jew and a practicing Muslim when it comes to what it, when they really take it seriously. You cannot tell the difference. Sure, the Orthodox Jew will like. I, this is what I love about Jewish people. They always think they can outsmart God. They'll be like, sure, yeah, I got to cover my hair, but I'll wear a wig. You know? <laughs> I love that about them. That's, it's so really, it's, a, it's an admirable trait about the Jewish people. <laughs> so, they're, they're good at negotiation. <laughs> exactly. And it's like... They've been doing it for thousands of years. <laughs> and it's like, these things are completely, you know, indistinguishable from one another. And... Up until very recently, up until really industrialization, all of Western Europe was a Christian, you know, was a Christian continent, was a, with Christian values. Even if the governments were secular, most of them even to this day are not. Germany is not a secular country. Uh, Sweden is not a secular country. They have official state religions, which are obviously all corrupted by t satanic priests who are telling you to trans your kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, but up until, you know, industrialization, all these people were Christian people and they, like, would women would cover their hair and dress modestly and you didn't have sex before marriage and you didn't have abortions and you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you understood that regardless of what the law was, the permissiveness of the state, you had your own separate set of religious principles by which you lived. Everything really changed when the when, <laughs> when uh, the 60s happened, the sexual revolution, and really people swear. People don't really believe the world began when these hoes burn their bras and it's it's not true it's just not true and that's what i guess that's a kind of roundabout way of saying to a great extent they are huh i don't want to i don't want to misspeak because if we're talking about a country that has as its legal basis religious law they're incompatible Which it's absolutely Sharia, that would... Sharia law, yeah. If we're talking about countries like Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, the United Arab Emirates, etc., they're completely incompatible because the f whole foundation of the Western liberal legal structure is the the liberal individual, is the individual economic unit. Your individual rights completely deracinated from your family ties, from your community ties, from anything. You are an economic actor first and foremost. And those are that is the premise upon which all your rights are based. About your rights to contract, your rights to exchange, your rights to barter, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That is a completely foreign and alien uh worldview coming from if you're coming from the perspective of Sharia or 
if you're coming from the perspective of a pre-modern Europe. Yeah. Someone like Adam Smith or Ricardo or whatever, they were revolutionary in yep. Europe for this reason. So or Thomas Jefferson, I mean. Or Thomas Jefferson, further, I mean, yeah. You know, and despite, you know, but despite all of that, he also was very much um, you know, someone who fought for religious freedom of practice as well and and in the United States. So he wanted but Daniel, to, yeah. how can you say that? Thomas Jefferson had sex with his slave yeah. and that makes him uh, a bad person. Yeah. That's that's actually debatable. Um I just watched a recent discussion that Douglas Murray had on his podcast on canceled history when he t he talked to a scholar about that very subject and the evidence is uh not as strong as <gasps> those people like No. Claim, so. A false yeah. narrative. Yes, I will say this defending Thomas Jefferson. The foundation of liberal mentality is race play fetishes. <laughs> it's a hundred thousand percent. If you are on Twitter and you see somebody being like, land back, the colonizers, blah, blah, blah. That person has an unaddressed race play fetish. The easiest place for like a mediocre white guy to pick up POC pussy is a DSA decolonized caucus. Like <laughs> it is the foundation of the liberal mind is uh, a thirst for BWC. I don't know what I don't know why. It's just an observation I made. I'm guilty of it as myself, but it is just something I've observed. What's, what's BW? What'd you say? BWSC? BWC. Like BBC, but BWC. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I'm not trying to get you guys demonetized. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. No, I, I think, I think the subject though that we're talking about here is very interesting. Like the difference between like a more religiously based Sharia law or theocratic type society and the individual right being at the forefront of society. And I guess we could argue there are there are pros and cons of both. You know, and yeah. and I think you know the U.S. used to be a little more balanced and we been, had that we had that element of cultural yes. enforcement which we lost yeah. in yes system. exactly it yeah. was informal where people would know you should not be thoughting your because in an era before hormonal birth control it was right. absolutely very risky to be yes. thoughting yourself out because you fall pregnant but right. it's like after we as a society have never grappled with the like earth shattering consequences of widespread hormonal birth control. Yes. Not only does it break women's brains, it makes them attracted to unattractive men and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, but what it does, it decouples sex from the risk of getting pregnant. And that is like the foundation of basically like civilization. Hormonal birth control is on par with like discovering fire and the internet and like how groundbreakingly yes transformative it is and we've just taken it as for granted it's only been two generations and it's like why are you so crazy science is awesome like uh, what are you what are you a science denying conspiracy theorist over there basil come on yes. Birth control is amazing. yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, another, right on my level. I like it. Another interesting, ironic kind of hypocrisy about the whole thing, which Jordan Peterson has talked about before as well, is like birth control was invented by a man. So this, you know, this 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 invention that enabled women to kind of go further in their careers and have more like well, freedom. Can we, can we back up a second though? The the the, the <laughs> thing Basil brought up. This is this new finding now that. Women on birth control, it affects their mate selection. Yeah, I've yeah. heard something about so that. So that, like, if you're on birth control and you're out there and you're dating and you think you fall in love with a guy, and then you stop taking the birth control because you want to get pregnant, and then you all of a sudden fall out of love with the guy because the hormones were messing with your head the entire time thinking that because your natural instinctual, like, oh, okay, I'm like, I'm a dad, you know, like, this guy's attractive. It gets totally warped. And this is not something that like, like I've just heard this like six months ago. This is not like, you know, and it's, it's amazingly groundbreaking. Again, it's, it's, it's like one of these things that's just like, it like pops up in the, the thing and then it goes away and it's like, oh, we don't want to talk about that. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like these women are it's like really two generations that this has been a thing. It's really only since Griswold v. Connecticut in the fifties that it's been a thing that single women can have this pill. And the thing is, it's like, I am not shocked that the the person who invented a pill that lets women get cream pie was a man. Like I'm not, that's not, <laughs> shocking. Well, I, I'm I sure the guy who invented prep was also a man too. Well, like I brought it up it, because it's kind of ironic in the sense of when you think about feminists. And how exactly. Like, oh, the the linchpin of their liberation was given yeah. to them by men. By Please, men yeah. If you, 
it, it, it takes a feather to pop these women's bubbles. Like, it's like, you don't need a needle to do it. It's like, you look at, you look at the bubble of a liberal feminist or radical feminist and the bu bubble pops. The bubble but, pops. But it's, it, it's really like a thing that goes across the board. I, I, I uh, subscribe to the Azalea Banks school of um, getting nutted in where it's like, you should not be taking pills to get nutted in. You do not need to be having men all up in you like that, in your spirit like that. It, it, stop doing that. Like, stop. Get off the prep. Get off the birth control. Yeah. Figure out what your body even wants. Like, be, be selective with the people you share your body with. And that, that shouldn't be viewed either as, like, an extreme thing. But now that's an extreme thing to say now. It's very conservative. And we're not even saying don't have, like, you know, sex yeah, outside exactly. of marriage. Yeah, like, I would say, like, don't have sex. Like, you know... The rule, don't have sex outside of marriage. Okay, girl, you're going to have sex outside of marriage. Don't let men nut in you who are, you are not willing to fall pregnant by. It's very simple to not get pregnant. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck about any of this. First of all, as a as a homosexual man, this whole, like, you know, Dobbs, I don't know if you want to answer, but, like, the whole Dobbs thing, it's like, I don't care. It's very easy to not fall pregnant. Don't let people who you're not willing to get pregnant by shoot up the club. It's very simple. But then they're going to be like, what about, you know... What about oh, uh, this minor exception? Oh, right, 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 right. The less than one percent. All right, we'll deal with that less than one percent. It's like we'll deal with that. We'll. Yeah. I'll give you your carve out, sweetie. We'll give you all the carve outs. But your the carve out is for me is never going to be one that's like you'll let every motherfucker shoot up the club and like you're going to be living consequence free. Like, no. sweetie, life I mean, has consequences. That's the thing. It's like. It's the same with being a man. Life has consequences. Life, you have duties, you have responsibilities. Life is not this like deracinated four-year college party for the rest of your life. Like, grow the fuck up. They want us to be perpetual adolescents for our whole yes. life. And eventually you just have to be like, I'm an adult. Some things are good, some things are bad. And this is an important part. Even some things that I personally partake in are bad. Just because I partake in them doesn't mean that it's good. I wish that we lived in a society. A normal society, this is how normal societies function, where we publicly condemn bad things, even if you or I on the low are like, <laughs> you know, do what we gotta do. You know, I don't need it should be normal to say, yeah, actually, I think it's fucking wrong to have pub a, a day where motherfuckers are pissing and shitting on each other in public. Yeah. Sorry. You wanna piss and shit on each other? Do it in private like a fucking normal person. Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Am I a fascist? Like, oh, yes, remember, you are. A total the, I went to Folsom for the first and only time oh, in God. like 20, it must be like 2010, 2011. And I'm, you know, young, gay, running around with a harness on. And We've all I, been there. We've all been there. I have not. I've never I'm had not, a harness. but spiritually. Spiritual. So, and I, you know, it's it's a scene. There are there are people dressed up like animals. You know, like there's women in horse horse attire doing like the horse thing is like a regular thing there. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's like you know also like people as furniture. You know, like they do like furniture things where they're doing this sort of like it's almost like a fakir sort of like standing trial where you. And sometimes Wait, this, is new. Like, this is new for me. This is this is new. This is new. Like, <laughs> <laughs> furniture. The furniture, yes. <laughs> and so the idea is that they have to like hold a position for like you know a period of time, and generally it's like they're acting as like uh you know like a serving tray or like a table or like okay okay I see where you're what you're getting at okay okay I see where it's getting at. I'm like what so like they're like sitting like this and someone's sitting on the like <laughs> no there was I I, I I saw it for the first time and there was this oh, woman God. and she was basically just holding a tray of candy. And she was like, sort of like, you know, bound and whatever. Yeah. And I like, I was like, it was making me nervous. So I just went up. I was like, "Are you okay?" And she was like, she just gave a very curt like nod. And I was like, "Okay." And I took a piece of candy and continued. And I was like, also, oh. this shit that reminds me, like, all of this shit. Listen, do whatever you want to do. Fun stuff is fun. Whatever. This shit for women is so jarring for me. Where it's like, if you see like men who pretend, uh, women who pretend to be men, so like trans men. They, like, claim to be, like, you know, they will align themselves, like, feminism and all that stuff, like, broadly because it's all connected. But then they'll be, like, the ones who get, like, slutted out and, like, passed around and fucked in the most, like, degrading ways. And it's, like, if you think about this, this is a woman who has poisoned herself with cross-sex hormones, mutilated herself by chopping off her tits, and is now getting trains ran on her by gay men who are getting doing it for clout points and also because it's like sometimes they do look like short, hot men. 
And it's like, this is like the height of like what actual misogyny is. And it's like, it's not because it's like progressive, I guess, or whatever. And yes. also to go back to Folsom really quick was that Folsom, this last season, to bring it full circle to what we were talking about earlier, this last season of Drag Race, Drag Race's main demographic, they've said it multiple times, are uh, like 12 year old suburban girls and gay men. Like it's like young suburban girls and gay men. So like the main uh, the main base of the Democratic Party, so it's like, and in that season they bring up Folsom where they're like, yeah, Folsom is this and that, and like they're like they're doing what at the fair, and it's like all like haha joke joke fun fun, but it's like you've now introduced this like leather bondage festival where motherfuckers yeah. are pissing and shitting on each other to a demographic that you have explicitly said is young girls and you know hum adult homosexual men. Yeah, when I was there, the I, I, I saw the most crazy things. And then I'm walking through the crowd, and all of a sudden, there's like a family of five. And it's like mom and dad are in their, you know, mid-40s, whatever. And there's like little Johnny and like Susie and Timmy. And, you know, they're like 14, like 10, and probably five. And I'm just like, what are you people? And everybody's got smiles on their faces. And I'm just like... Me, you know, with spiky hair, harness, like leather pants. I'm like, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, this I am made uncomfortable because you are so fucking comfortable bringing your tots here. Wow, yeah, get your kids out of my space. There was no moment when that happened, though, when you like asked yourself that question, Brett. <laughs> No, I what just am I, I doing I was, here? I was stunned. I no, was, you're you're in your early twenties. Yeah, just, no, yeah, you know. Hey, I was I was right in the middle of my element. I was having uh, a like, great time. I wanted nothing to do like, with why it. Why are there children here? Uh, no, I was very much fast. I didn't like. I was very much like. My early twenties were very different from my late twenties. Yeah, <laughs> I was not like going to Folsom like a regular thing, but I was very much like, oh yeah, this is totally fine. But the thing is, in twenty twenty two. The most dangerous aspect of what you described was that this child, like, being taught that they could be born in the wrong body is to get back to, like, the main thing. It's like, and that, that fault aspect of Folsom is in their classroom where yep. it's like for a year and a half. So basically, like, the when I came onto the internet to be like, to harass like four or five podcasts that I was listening to that were like, all called like the post left maybe like a, i don't know if you were familiar with that like a year ago a year and a half ago there was like a constellation of media actors that were called the post left that i was like listening to a lot and i was like you all have this huge blind spot when it comes to like the transformer question so i was like going onto the internet to like harass them about it and they'd be like oh this is culture war you're obsessed like why is this isn't important I'm like bro not only is it such that you will get deplatformed, taken off the internet for stating these obvious truths because gender ide ideology is incorporated through online terms of service? Not only is it the case that you will be removed from your job because gender ideology is incorporated into your workplace HR department, it is also the case that in public schools, the schools that working people rely on to watch their children while they're at work are actively teaching them that it is possible for people, and by extension them, to be born in the wrong body. Which is a lie. It's not true. Yeah. You and know, and that's problem. that's a material working class issue. And it's a horrible thing to teach. It's disgusting. A kid, it's also a, a winning that, issue you know? for conservatives. Like yeah. well, all, yes, all if they were smart, if they knew how to holistically do it, it was a winning issue. Governor Yunkin in Virginia, yeah. they people like to attribute him either his win either to his closeness to Trump or his distancing himself from Trump. The reason the governor of Virginia won his election was 100,000% because of the Loudoun County transformer tra rapist. Yep. If that trainee did not go and rape those two girls in that county and it was not made a political issue, he would have lost. He won because of the gender question. And if the Republican Party was smart, but the thing is, the Republican Party is a secret. The re not even that they're not smart. They're very, some, not even them are very smart. Ha a lot of the Republican Party are leftists. If you look at someone like Mitt Romney, oh yeah, Boehner, um, fucking Caitlyn Jenner types, you know, it's or it's like not even that. It's, you know, it's like establishment Republicans who work with the left regularly, 
Who's the fucking uh, Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell, Lindsey you know, Graham. These people work with the left. They're yeah. leftists just in the Republican Party. They're geo. Yeah. I call them GOP leftists. The people in the Republican Party who are not leftists are people who they constantly deride. The people that we, I, I assume you like as well. Like you know, Marjorie I love. Taylor I, lo- I love Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, I love. Thomas I love. Nassie. When Thomas Nasty followed me back on Twitter, I was like, ah! Rand Paul. Rebel. Exactly. Like these people are not leftists. Right. But many in the Republican Party are leftists. And the way I define a leftist is someone who advances the positions of the left. And the left is like uh is a political coalition that, like I said earlier, like involves like professional managerial people, lumpen street thugs, and people who are dependent on public assistance. And the fun the fundraiser, the the sections of capital that support them are big pharma big tech the defense industry and um pharma tech fine and finance and like the deep state is like not a section of industry but it's like the web that connects it all together that effectuates what they but it's like tech defense pharma finance that those are the sections of capital that finance the left and there are plenty of them in the republican party yeah there's yeah. definitely some interesting overlapping elements of the left like one of them that just came to mind now is like and it was a huge part of like the civil rights movement and stuff is nation of islam like you even you even find that you find like oh some overlapping elements of islam with you know black power and the black rights movement and all this stuff which are all traditionally from from the left so yeah one of the, I, i've said it before i was like you know as a muslim i take the official position that like excuse me, the nation of Islam are not Muslims because they take a prophet after the prophet Muhammad. It's a, it's a, it's a dry position, but whatever. But I always say like the best thing that happened to black Americans is Islam. Like Malcolm X, you know, like that was like, cause it was like, act right. Get like, take care of your women, raise your families, get it. Like, it's like, organize yourself, respect yourself. Don't do drugs. Don't drink. Don't gamble. Like you could, or you could argue, christianity for the same yeah. reason from the martin luther king side you know right but the thing is is that so many times especially in like the modern sense when people call themselves christian it's like sure like you're nominally christian but are you like a justin bieber mega church type of christian where it's like yeah. everything is okay god loves me no matter what i do like no i'm sorry god is a vengeful god and he has rules okay like he, yeah. like, he demands certain things he demands submission so this 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 touches on another thing that I wanted to bring up as well is, you know, that there is more violence that does seem to come from Islamic factions as opposed oh, yeah. to Christian factions. And I was wondering, you know, some of your thoughts on that. I don't know if you've ever read Gad Saad. Um, he wrote a, he's a scholar. Um, he's an atheist, I believe, but he comes from a Jewish background and he's from Lebanon, if I recall correct, correctly. And he wrote a great book called The Parasitic Mind, which touches on all this woke stuff. And one of the subjects he touches on on there is Islam. Um, he lays some pretty interesting criticisms against it, but he also talks about how incompatible it is with the woke ideology, but the fact that they still take it under their wing and it's contradictory of them. But, you know, what do you think about the subject of violence in Islam and why do you think that there, there seems to be more violence that comes from, from Islam? Well, you have to take a historical perspective. So it's like, it's like for like the mid, the early to mid 20th century, it's like there have been like opposition to like, so the way the whole world works basically is like, there's two sides to the whole global political system. There's the Anglo-American side. So it's like Wall Street and the city of London. So the US and the UK and NATO. And that is like the Western side. And then it's on the other side, you have Russia, Iran, China, uh, Venezuela, Afghanistan now, you know, uh, all these other countries that stand in opposition to it. 20th century, that opposition got to take different, would look different. It was like pan Arab secular nationalism. You know, you had the Nasser's, you had the whatever. They lost because they were for multitude of reasons. That's like way too long to get into, but they lost. The way the opposition to that looks now is through um, religiosity. You know, it's it's kind of it's it heightens the the fact that we brought up earlier with the incompatibility comp- incompatibility that we brought in earlier of Islam with Western liberalism and heightening that fact in order to like say yeah no the way we organize ourselves in opposition to the Anglo-American financial empire the WTO and all that stuff the UN 
is through Islam, through politicized... Because Islam in and of itself is a political um, ideology. It gives yeah. you a framework to not just how you pray, how you live your life, how you interact with your rulers, how you interact with your neighbors, how you conduct business. It's the same thing with Orthodox Judaism. It's not just about how you pray. It's about how you treat your neighbors, how you conduct business, how you treat, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is why in the 21st century, opposition to the Anglo-American empire in these Muslim countries takes on a religious bent. So that's why it's like, in Afghanistan, I'm a, a fully on the internet. I am like, an apologist for the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Am I, oh, uh, do I love the Taliban? No. But do I, do I understand that they are the only organized opposition to Western imperialism and occupation? Yes, that is just an objective fact. Who kicked out the puppet regime? The Taliban. You, who do you, who do I, who is the current government of Afghanistan? The, uh, the IEA, Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban. So I'm like, my position is, for American anti-woke people is to say the Taliban just fought the army of the same people that we hate. The people that they hate are the same people we hate. Tech, defense, pharma, finance, defense, the defense industry. Ukraine currently in Afghanistan for the past 20 years, we're not about Western European liberal values in Ukraine or democracy building in Afghanistan. No, it was about funneling taxpayer money from Americans to the defense industry. It's you just have to first send the money to Afghanistan so that Afghanistan can give the money to the defense contractors. Now you send the money to Ukraine so Ukraine can send the money to the defense contractors. And it's like, that's why, you know, I, of course, you know, I don't advocate for violence, blah, 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 da, 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 all that throat clearing. But I mean, if you're if you're if you are an Afghan in Afghanistan, you're Muslim. Yeah, why not? Like you gotta defend, you gotta kick out the imperialists, you gotta kick out the fucking invaders. And it's so funny. Um, after the Taliban won, they had a military parade, which many countries do. Russia does, you know, Korea does. We do sometimes. Like, I don't think we do actually. I don't know if we do military parade. We do like you know the the Blue Angels, like the fighter jets and stuff. Yeah. But they had a military parade, and the stuff that they showed were like jerry cans like oil like gasoline jerry cans they're like they're like this is what we use to kick out the strongest military alliance in the world because they would use those to create um what's it called improvise ieds so it's like listen if you are actively being occupied by and you know what that occupation government was doing Forcing feminism and gender ideology on the fucking people. Yeah. Why do you think rural Afghans don't send their kids to school? It's not because they don't think that women should be educated. They're Muslim. They know that education is women's rights. They'll say it themselves. They just know that when they go send their daughters to that school, their daughter is going to come back and say, like, I don't need a man. I am going to be childless and unmarried until I'm 40 and I hate my father and I hate God. <laughs> So they don't send their children to public schools. And this is actually what I talked about on the second episode of my podcast, Teachers of TikTok, where it's like the whole public education system is like an is a ideological indoctrination system for yeah. the powers that be. So you know? and if, Sorry, I'm rambling. But like if the powers that be are an occupying force, the schools are going to teach you to love the occupying force and the things that they believe. Right. It's a, it's a very good point. Uh, I also wanted to ask you about Ayan Hirshi Ali. Are you familiar with her? I'm familiar with her. What do you think of her work? I mean, I found her very insightful. I think her story was interesting. And I think, you know, she does make some some valid criticisms. You want to give a little context? Because I have no idea who you're talking so about. So she, she was a Somali-born Dutch-American activist and a former politician. She's a critic of Islam, um, advocates for rights, self-determination of Muslim women, etc. She's been on all types of podcasts. Um, she had a great discussion with Jordan Peterson a few years ago, which I saw. Um, I have not read her books yet, but I've been meaning to look into them, etc. But I was just curious of, you know, if they I'll admit, I'm not hugely familiar with her. I'm familiar with her enough to that point. Like, where it's like everything that you said, I'm like familiar with. I want to point out, um, it's just funny to me to be Somali born Dutch American. It's like, Dude, what does that mean? <laughs> it's, it's, you're Somali. I don't care what your passport says. Um, no, first of all, I want to say, I a hundred. Listen, if you started cutting up my genitals, I would be. I would have a chip on my shoulder as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
that being said, as a as a circumcised man, I mean it's uh, it's very different. Um, Man circumcision. (laughs) I'm very much pro circumcision. I just think it looks nicer. (laughs) We're we're not for it. I mean, Um, I'm I'm against it for the same reasons I'm against uh, transitioning of minors. I know. I get. I get that. I this is something that I'm very happy to like be the minority on this. Where it's like. (laughs) But the thing is, I didn't make I didn't make the rules. The rules are the rules. Fine, Basil, we can disagree, and it's fine. So the, my point being is that I totally get her having her chip on her shoulder. But the reason that you or I or anyone knows who Ion Hershey Ali is, is that it's useful to elevate a voice like that in the post-2001 context when you are actively attacked, when you're... you're society's enemies are um are theologically inspired uh, muslim resistance fighters yeah so it's like that cannot you cannot escape you cannot um extricate that from its context well it goes back to the question we were asking though about is there a compatibility between islam and the west you know if, if people come to the west and they have islamic values like how much of uh an integration should take place between those values and being somewhere like here well the question of integration is always is one that i love to have because so obviously we uh, my family came to america the content of uh, the america is not europe she's dutch right america is not europe europe is a hellhole they they have america um Okay, how do I put this? I say yes, it's full citizenship. It says, right? Yeah, I um, okay. she's Dutch American. Yes, flippantly, I say, deport all Afghans, starting in reverse chronological order. So starting <laughs> with the ones who just got anywhere. If you got, if you left Afghanistan in twenty twenty two, you got to go back today. Oh my God. <laughs> like, for me, my family came in the eighties, so it's like we'll be at the end. Of the yeah, we'll be at. I'll go back. I'll go back. But like. Later. <laughs> <You know>? Later. <laughs> but the point being is that in America, we integrate immigrants, period, much better than they do in Europe, including Muslim immigrants. The issue with that, and I talk about this with Abdullah in our episode, is that their parents, oh my God, is that their kids, um, I love those, their kids end up being um, radical liberals. They end up being co- what I call commie hijabis. They'll wear a hijab. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They'll wear a hijab and tell you trans women are women when it's like disgusting. It's 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 honestly my it's it's something that like really does something to my insides. Where it's like you are perverting the religion of our ancestors. You are disgusting. Like I understand stoning now. Um, so <laughs> so, yeah. so that's one thing. But they aren't complete. They are not a threat to the established order in any meaningful way. They are useful idiots for the left, and the second that they're not, they're completely discarded. It's kind of like what we were talking about earlier, where it's like, if I sat here and said trans women or women, they have no problem with me being, you know, attracted to men and Muslim or whatever. But if I start saying heterodox things, then it's, oh, you have internalized conflict, and they just kind of throw you out. In Europe is a completely different fucking story. Europe has ghettos of Muslims, of Muslim immigrants. So I, when my parents left Afghanistan, my mom is half French. We had the option of going to France. And when I was little, I was like, oh, la, la, that would have been so great. We should have gone to France. Like, that would have been amazing. Da, da, da. But, yeah, now, so funny, man. <laughs> but now I realize, like, that would have been fucking horrible because I would have been a fat gay Muslim in <laughs> a fucking banlieue <laughs> in Paris and, and being, like, surrounded by a bunch of, like, Moroccan drug dealers. And it's like, I would have caught... Because the thing about Europe is... is in France, there are French people. In Germany, there are German people. You could pretend and say your parents who came here from Turkey to Germany two generations, uh, for 30 years ago, are Germans because they have a German passport, but a real German, and the, a left be like, what do you mean a real German? This person has a German passport. No, we know what we mean. A real German, a real French, a real Brit, a real Spaniard, a real whatever, can turn to you and say, listen, you fat, gay, Afghan, Muslim, get the fuck out of my country. And guess what? He has a fucking point. It's very natural to say, my family has been here since time immemorial. My pa- family fucking grew out of the ground here in Holland. I don't want to see my community run overrun by Moroccans and Somalis. It's very natural. Whereas it's different here in America where 
really the only person who could say that to me is like a Native American. I would laugh in their face because like, LOL, take the L, like shut the fuck up. Like you're not like, <laughs> and then the, the other person who could say that is like a foundational American who's like, my family came here on the Mayflower. And it's like, all right, deal with it, bro. Like, it's like, whatever it's, but if I lived in France, a real French person came up to me was like, get your fat Muslim ass out of here. It would really fucking give me a fucking chip on my shoulder. Yeah. So that's the different context. And it's like in Europe, Good luck to those people. <laughs> like that is not the con- that is like I the incompatibility is a real fucking issue. Yeah. Would and you, um, would you say you you appreciate the United States more because of the fact that you know we're we are this melting pot type culture? Alhamdulillah, so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm so grateful that we came to America and not Europe because, like I said, there's no like real American to be like get the fuck out. You know, especially in a, in an instance in which. 200,000 people are crossing the southern border every month. It's like, sweetie, I came here. And this is something I want to bring up, too, though. It's like, I my parents are actual refugees. The Soviet Union invaded. There was a war. People leaving Honduras because their boyfriend was in a gang and started beating them up. And they wanted to get a better job. And crossing five Spanish-speaking countries in order to come to America is not a refugee. They're an economic migrant and it's completely different. And it's low key, very insulting to conflate those two things as quote unquote, as a refugee, not to do the, like, you know, I'm the first one to be like, as a gay man, as a refugee. (laughs) Speak your lived experience, girl. Well, it was his parents lived experience. Yeah, exactly. That's lived experience, girl. Listen, that generational trauma or something or other, I don't know, black girl magic or whatever, I don't know. (laughs) Totally legitimate, totally legitimate. Oh, man. All right, so we're we're about an hour and 40, so I think we should call it here. But we'll have to do another one. We will do another one. This is so much fun. So much fun wrapping up Basil. Basil. We we appreciate you. Um, You have a great sense of humor man like i love your yeah. voices you do the best voices it's been a while Thank since I've, I've laughed this much on the show and it really depends on the type of guests we have you know sometimes we have more serious guests and the conversation stays serious and other times we have guests where we can talk about these very serious subjects but they bring that sense of levity to the conversation i think a spoonful of sugar definitely helps, helps the uh, trans yeah. women or men go down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh man, we're gonna get so canceled again for the millionth time. Um, Rachel, <laughs> tell everyone where, where they can find you. Cool. So actually, I just re- got my original account Neo Bactrian instated, which we got nuked a year ago. All right, let me oh, go. welcome back. Had... Follow that one. 10 accounts, I think, in the past year. <laughs> so, hey. I've got, I've had three. I've managed, three personal. I've managed to keep my original. I've only got oh, one slap. So, yeah, you could follow me on Twitter at Neobactrian. Um, there you'll see the link tree, and you could also check out um, Bear Bactrian podcast. If you liked any, like the stuff that we talked about here, you'll definitely like um, the second episode, Teachers of TikTok. You'll like, um, the one that I had with Abdullah Yusuf about Islam, you'll like the one with Christian Walker about like LGBTQIA OPP two plus S stuff. <laughs> um, and also um, there was one more, which one was it? Oh yeah, actually gender critical trouble. If you guys, I, I'm sure you guys know, if you know Billboard Chris, you know Helena Kirshner? Uh, I think so. Sounds familiar. She was on, uh, she was on uh, Tucker Carlson's documentary and she's like very well known detransitioner. That one was a good one as well. So um, hopefully, I don't know when this will come out, but before New Year's, I will put up the tenth and last episode, which will be about my trip to Afghanistan, which was like my first ever trip to the homeland. My parents left forty years ago. We never set foot back. Me and my brother went in September. It was like a great trip. Wow. Yeah, I so, saw. Yeah, I no, saw the, I would, I'm very interested to hear that whole story. I saw the yeah. footage that you put together from the trip. Yeah, that little I tried. I, my, my almost thirty year old ass trying to make a fucking TikTok. Do you know how fucking long that took? <laughs> oh, man. I, I've already gotten kicked off of TikTok once. Yeah, oh, no, that's not the platform for people like us. No, no, oh. it is not, man. They're very strict. the Chicoms do not like us. They no, don't. No, yeah. they don't. You I can't. got. I was notorious for talking about the Paul Pelosi attack and making <laughs> Smollier comparisons. <laughs> So not- it was it was a, it was a hooker, right? Or it's like it's someone that he was fucking. You know the whole allegedly, st- allegedly, allegedly. 
kind of just vanished. I have no idea what the... Yeah. So the last I heard was that there was a guy, the CBS, the original big CBS, or maybe it was NBC reporter who talked about it, did in fact publish uh, information that came from the police department that said that they had gone to the door and that they had opened the door and that Paul Pelosi had opened the door calmly, not indicating there was a problem. Uh, and then they walked in, and as they followed him back in to the thing, that was where uh, the De Pape or whatever his name is was there with a hammer, and they began quickly like that. They got into a, a struggle, and that was when he popped Paul, and that's the official story. Now we're gonna have to wait. Don't for the do Tina, kids. Stay Don't. away from that Tina. Stay away from that Tina. If anything, right. if Ed Buck. Paul Pelosi and Andrew Gillum have taught us anything. It's don't mess with that Tina. Just because you like men doesn't mean you gotta be in a Tina. Yeah. Stop doing nose candy and having orgies in the middle of the night. Oh dear. All right. I think we should... in politics. Let's end it on that really. Okay, I guess we can end it there. No. Um... Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Give us your money. We love you. And we'll be back again soon with another one. Bye bye.